my guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the die beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization down here in this undisclosed swamp on this gorgeous spring day. That would be Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. And I don't know where the day is gone. Uh, hoping I have time to take the little dog on a walk in the park but before uh, I do that. Do what I do every day. And that is chronicling the collapse of everything. And uh, it's pretty much that this channel is turning into chronicling the BS of the United Nations. I'm, uh, I'm spending too much of my time talking about the United Nations, but it's just, uh, it, it, it's just never ending. And so uh, we're going to go over to the Guardian for today's uh, update on what the United Nations is talking about. And we're going to get into this, this uh, whole, you know, one of the many oxymorons for the 20th century. And that is the whole concept, the whole BS concept of net zero emissions. The uh, oxymoron uh, <laughs> net zero emissions and all this crap. So anyway, uh, any of you like like me, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what what all this is, and we're gonna let the Guardian uh, help us figure this out right here on Yahoo News today. <clears throat> Global oil companies have com global oil companies uh, have committed to net zero emissions. It is a sham. Thank you, Guardian. This is otherwise sham. I love that word, sham. It's a sham. It is a lie. It is a myth. It is bullshit. Okay. And you read it right here in Yahoo News. So uh, take it away, Gardens, Guardian. I got sidetracked by uh, the number one trending story on the planet. Burger King shocks customers with insane new menu item. My stomach would kill me. That's the number one trending story on the planet and probably the number <coughs> 100,000th is <coughs> global oil companies have committed to net zero emissions. It's a sham. All right, we have a new campaign in the UN called Race to Zero. Well, I cannot think of a more honest uh, campaign by the United Nations, and then race to zero. Uh, that, that, finally, we, we have an honest campaign uh, in the United Nations, race to zero. <clears throat> the United Nations campaign race to zero recently published a paper identifying 20 pathways to reach net zero carbon emissions. In December, the British Oil and Gas Authority published a requirement, a requirement that oil and gas development will be, quote, consistent with net zero, despite approval of new offshore permits. BP, Shell, and other multinational companies have all now published their own net zero pathways and uh, then they already take you off to a related story which I thought of sharing uh, the climate crisis cannot be solved by carbon accounting tricks which is what net zero emissions are is creative accounting okay <clears throat> the world finally seems to be aligning 
around the idea that to have a stable and safe planet, we need to reach net zero emissions. That's fantastic and overdue. What is less fantastic is that many companies and countries, which you can use those two terms pretty much interchangeably now, what's less fantastic is that many companies and countries are using net zero to justify expanding the production of fossil fuels. This is something people living near fossil fuel infrastructure and our global climate simply cannot afford. Yes, we are going to expand the production of fossil fuels to reach net zero emissions. Okay, we're going to look at a couple of examples. Take Canadian oil giant Enbridge, for example. In November, Enbridge Corporation committed to a target of net zero emissions. In spite of that commitment, the company has pushed forward with blasting and building a new tar sands pipeline through sensitive waterways and in indigenous lands. The Line 3 pipeline is heavily opposed by local... Damn, as soon as I get on here, the uh, phone starts ringing. The Line 3 pipeline is heavily opposed by local community water protectors and indigenous leaders, many of whom have been arrested in the past month for blockading the project. The pipeline if completed, would have the impact of opening 50 new coal-fired power plants or adding 38 million new gas-powered gasoline-powered vehicles to our roads. This certainly sounds like a path to net zero emissions. This is like a smoker going from one pack a day to two, and then claiming they are quitting because they're switching to filtered cigarettes. <laughs> Thank you, Guardian. <clears throat> All that the major oil companies have done, with tacit support from many governments, is shift their public narrative about the climate crisis from denial to Delusion. They are no longer insisting there's no problem because they lost that argument. Net zero is now their attempt to continue business as usual without addressing what they're doing to people and the planet. If it wasn't so serious, you know, what they're doing to the planet, the premise would almost be comical. Oil companies are now claiming that not only can they keep their current levels of production, but expand their operations that extract and refine fossil fuels. They would have us believe that by planting trees and using largely unproven, expensive, and thus far inefficient carbon capture technologies, they can reach net zero and solve the cl climate crisis, all while continuing to grow fossil fuel production. This argument is delusional and based on bad science. To have any realistic shot at maintaining a 1.5 C world, guys, uh, as a guardian knows damn well, we have no realistic shot or even an unrealistic shot at maintaining a 1.5 C world. We need to be winding down and phasing out fossil fuel production, not growing it as its executives are incentivized to do. <clears throat> Even as fossil fuel companies admit 
the climate crisis is a real and pressing issue, they are continuing to build out infrastructure to support 120% more fossil fuels than the world can burn in a one and a half scenario. Not to mention that they're also spending billions of dollars lobbying governments to weaken climate policy. Let's be clear. Net zero is being used by incumbents to obfuscate what actually needs to be done to meet the Paris climate goals. <clears throat> they, the rush to build out more infrastructure, the inordinate amount of spending to influence elected officials, all of this is a last gasp attempt by a dying industry to lock in as much profit as possible while it still can. Thank you. Get out there and lock in as much profit as possible while you still can. This is what this entire net zero uh, BS is all about. It, it, it's, to, it's the same thing that the entire bright green lie of electric vehicles and re clean green renewable energy and all the rest of it. it. All of this shit is a last gasp attempt to lock in as much profit as possible while these planet eaters still can. Thank you, uh, Yahoo News and The Guardian, for explaining this to us. <clears throat> Fossil fuel companies are using bloated estimates of nature-based and carbon capture technologies along with carbon markets to justify further fossil fuel expansion and production. <coughs> we can't let them. We already have too much carbon in the atmosphere. We are already experiencing floods, fires, droughts, and extreme weather. At this juncture, every extra ton produced matters. That's why we need a solution. Yes, that's why we need a solution that involves international cooperation supported by a massive groundswell of popular support to solve this crisis, arguably the largest and most urgent crisis we have ever faced as a species. One that pushes back against false solutions and manages the transition to a clean energy economy in a way that is safe, fast, and fair. The best solution, the best solution is a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty paired with local actions to constrict fossil fuels like those being undertaken by movements like safe cities, safe cities, Yes, another oxymoron for the end times. To phase down fossil fuels and enable a globally equitable transition to cleaner energy and economies. No government or company can do this alone. If we are to address competitiveness, equity, leakage, and everything else, needed to align production with climate science. We need international cooperation. Yes. Okay. So what are the, uh, what are some of the goals of the fossil fuel non-proliferation treaties? The guiding principles of the treaty are straightforward and modeled on post-conflict and nuclear non-proliferation treaties. Number one, non-proliferation, otherwise known as 
preventing proliferation by ending all new exploration and production. Number two, global disarmament phasing out existing production in line with one and a half C. Oh yes. And number three, peaceful transition, fast tracking real solutions. Fast tracking real solutions through scaled up access to renewable energy and a just transition for every worker, community, and country. The challenge of climate change is large, but it is not intractable. There are pathways out there that lead to a one and a half C world. They just don't include fossil fuel companies and governments that insist they can keep expanding production under the guise of net zero. So who were these two apocalyptimist uh, little greenies claiming that uh, the New Green Deal is going to save the planet from fossil fuels? Zipporah Berman is the chair of the Fossil Fuel Nonproliferation Treaty. Yes, do you think so? And Nat Nathan Taft is a senior digital campaigner who works on the treaty's sister campaign, Safe Cities, at Stand.Earth. So once again, uh, the apocalyptimism is alive and well in uh, the Guardian uh, and Yahoo News, but at least, at least the apocalyptimists have it half right. Uh, <laughs> all of this crap about net zero emissions. So they got that half right. <clears throat> now they just have to figure out the other half. Maybe they should read the new book. I. Uh, is, has bright green lies been released? You know, Derek Jensen will never speak to me again. So I don't know if uh, is bright green lies out there. I suggest that these two folks read bright green lies. Anyway, little dog, I got two phone calls in there. So now I got to return phone, two phone calls. The sun is going down. I'm not sure we have time for a walk on this beautiful day. I know that you want to go on a walk, but the day has just disappeared, and now the sun's going down. When do we set these damn clocks? I think Sunday, uh, finally, we get our an hour a day of our life back starting on Sunday. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your uh, net zero delusions while you still can. Bye guys.